Ross Tubman, former slave, former liberator of slaves, former army intelligence officer, now suffragette, now lecturer, journeying on this dusty, damp, segregated train car that breaks through space and time as rapidly as the light of the moon when it subdues the darkness. War is done, and the cannons are silent. Reflections and memories, now reaching back as far as the Moses time, as far as those early years of midnight. Sorry about Ma's dead. <laughs> what those two need to be is worked over with my whip. Dramatics, Yankee. Dramatics. That's the way slaves act when they can't help themselves. You'll learn. You told me the Holy Spirit would stay with me all the time. But they took my sister. You let them take my sister. You talking to them voices again, huh? Don't you be sneaking up on me like that no more, Jim. Dad, I wasn't teasing you. Wait a minute, girl. Dad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your sister being sold off, too. Know what I did when they sold my mama and my daddy away? What did you do? I went to Massa. And I said, Massa, now I ain't got no mama, and I ain't got no daddy because you done sold them off. I want to let you know I appreciate you for it. Why you tell him a fool thing like that? Let me finish. I said, I appreciate you, Massa, because I'm going to show you I got the powers to be a man without a mama and a daddy. And what he do to you for saying something like that? He said, you better take your powers to the field, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you tell a tall tale and you know it, Jim. I ain't telling that out loud, but that's what I had on my mind. <laughs> I done made up my mind, Hat. I'm gonna make my getaway. I'm gonna make my getaway, join Nat Turner and free all the slave folks. Like to go with you? I'd like to take you along, Hat, but it won't do. Two runaways always get caught quicker than one. When you cover for me, when I make my getaway. Sure I will, Jim. Sure I will. I see you, Shadrach. What's he doing here? Oh, Shadrach, he's always up to some kind of dirt. Let's get that Let's devil there.
are you? Oh. I got you! <laughs> Run, so yeah. Come, come here! Get away from that door, girl! Come on! with that baby? I done tried everything, Miss Susan. But he just won't hush up. He's been going on like this ever since Tilly went away. Don't you think I know that? Now, I want you to find a way to keep that baby quiet, Mammy Portia, and I want you to do it quick. Yes, Miss Susan. You Yankee knobhead. You don't kill slaves. And you don't beat their heads in. You capture slaves and you punish them. But you don't do what you did. So what now? You're fired. Get off of my plantation and stay off. God Almighty is in the rain. God Almighty is in the sun. The Holy Spirit is here. how you treat a slave master. She wouldn't be this way if she hadn't let that runaway buck mess with her. You were sick badly once, and your friend Doc Thompson couldn't do nothing about it. So I came when you called. Your life was dangling on a thread, and I saved you. You say you were going to set me free, and you never did. You say you'll never break up our family, but you sold off Tilly, and now this. You've got no right to talk to me that way, slave woman. I let that gal have a way, and I never beat her once. I put Ben in charge of the timber yard. I've been good to y'all. I didn't have nothing to do with that gal getting her head bashed. But no matter what I do, or don't do, I don't have to keep promises to a slave woman with her black magic oils and roots. You wish you had, Marza. <laughs> I let my crack and go. shape she's in. Worth a try. Mm. Edward, you know once you put your mind to it, you could talk anybody into anything. You really believe that? <laughs> talk me into marrying you, didn't you? Mm, hell, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, Edward. But you also love money. Well, there she is. Name your price. She'll be one of the best breeders you ever owned. You'll be joking with the boys what a fool Edward was. Let me have a prime gal like this for almost nothing. I don't know, Edward. She don't look too healthy to me. Say something, gal. Well, she can't say anything. She's asleep. Wake up, gal. She was one of the 
strongest wenches I ever had for this unfortunate mishap. She'll be that way again, too. Your price, sir. No. No price at all, Edna. Damn you. You still, Lord? I don't know what it is you say. Just show me a way for Master Air to be dead. For Master Air to be smiked down. The devil's got him. He don't know how to be right. He ought to be dead with his evil ways. I pray every morning, every day, every night that he be gone. I pray now. You gone? Did you hear me, Lord? Did you? Did you hear me? It's that old fever that's been with him since he was a child, and now it's gotten to his heart. His heart? Yes. Well, there's nothing that we can do now but wait for the fever to go down. Well, is, is he going to die, Doc Thompson? I don't know, Susan. I, I really don't know. And what? Edward, Edward, tell me what it is. What is it? Oh, Edward, I want you to live so much. I love you. I've always loved you. Juba. Juba. Now, Nick he wants Juba and her potions. You get her up here right away. Yes. better hurry, because I don't think he's going to last long. I'll be there.
is taking her so long. I'm afraid it won't matter when she gets here, Susan. Go on. No! 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 I wished it and prayed it on him. Wicked though he was, I had no right to take a life. Oh, mercy on me, Lord. Wash my sins away. Wash the blood from my body. Wash my face with snow and clean the hate away. Oh, mercy on me, Lord. Lord? Hear me? Did you hear me? Did you? <gasps> Wash my sins away. Wash the blood from my body. Wash my face with snow to clean the hate away. as swiftly as the years of growth came and went, running through time measured by endurance, unaware of the future that would bear her the crown of Moses. Sleep with Miss Susan there. No. How you know? Well, she a weird Cambridge flitting around with other men most of the time. Now, if he was sleeping with her, you wouldn't allow her to do that. You're always in the house with her, just like Master Ed was. Harriet, hey, Master Doc and Master Ed were good buddies. That's why he left them to be guardian of this plantation. Now, you think old Master Ed would have left a man in his house who's going to be messing with his wife? Mm -mm. Now, that's why you leave good buddies to be guardians instead of just friends. Well, even if he is messed with her, Master Ed sure can't do nothing because he did. Get on over there and saw up that log, girl. Come down here and scare them up a bit in the quarter. You patrollers leave my slaves alone. They behave themselves, and I don't need you trampling over them. But next time, we ain't gonna ask you. Let's go! Hell! <laughs> Departed husband Edward. He hired him a long time ago, and you know that. Why do you think I resigned from the Planters Association? I do apologize. I didn't know that. Ben, look what hat made for her mama. Well, now that's a mighty fine looking bowl, daughter. 
Who do you think taught her? Thank you, Hat. I sure am glad you like it, Mom. <laughs> Can we eat now, yo? Come on out there, Benji. Come on, Mom. Now, where's that, Robert? Where's you been, boy? Me and Alvina, we've been walking. Yeah, she all spent a heap of time walking for two who ain't been over the broom yet. Well, that's why I bought Alvina here, Mama. We want Daddy to talk to Master Doc about us and getting married. You hear that, Ben? You better get some kind of permission from Master Doc before these walks of theirs get this girl's stomach to looking like it's got a watermelon in it. And she didn't say that for laughing. I'll talk to him about it, Robert. Until I do, no more of these walks, you hear me? Yes, sir. Elvina? Why don't you stay and have supper with us? Thank you, Daddy Ben. We thank you, Lord, for the life you gave us today. Food on the table tonight. Amen. 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 Daddy? Hmm? While she's seeing Master Doc about Robert and Albina, can you ask him something for me? About what? About my steward's place. Yeah, he's looking for high ops. Ain't you happy working in the temple yard with me? Of course I is, Daddy. But if I could get myself hired out, I could go to Bucktown, take him washing, get some other kind of jobs. Maybe I'd make enough money one day to buy us all our freedom. Now, Harriet, you might as well throw that notion right out your head. But she knows my stock ain't gonna allow it. And still try, can't we, Daddy? Of course we can. What happened, Ben? Well, she had another one of her fainting spells, Master. That's the third time this week. See what I was telling Edward? I'm afraid this gal's going to be more of a burden than she is an asset. Well, sir, does she still want to work on the Stewart place? Does she, Ben? Yes. Well, then I suggest we sort of loan her to Mr. Stewart. In that way, she'll be his burden. It's a good idea. Looks like the young master's learning fast, isn't he, Ben? Yes, sir. He shall sure is. All right. You have my permission to send her over to Stewart's place, but under the condition that she hands over to me one dollar every week. And that's whether she earns anything or not. You understand me, Ben? Yes. Okay, can I take her into the cabin now, sir? Yes, Ben. Come, Edward. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Young Mars is learning real fast, ain't he, Ben? Thank you, big stuff. Just cause you're going to work for Master Stewart. Laura May told me about you yesterday. What'd she tell you? Say, it's true. You and your daddy didn't want to take me in just cause I was a cast off. Oh, shit, rat. You still got that on your mind? That was my long years ago. It wasn't true then, it ain't true now. It is, and you know it. The truth ain't in none of you, Rosses. Think you're something special just cause your daddy bossed the lumber yard. But you ain't doing nothing but licking Master Doc's boots just like you done with Master Yeah, if you leave me be, I'll wrap this stick right around your head. Yeah, well, you just... I said, I bet I'll make you pray. <laughs> hey, what's going, going on? Huh? Where are you going, gal? I'm going 
work as a pound, Master Stewart's place? Well, let me see your pass. All right. Get on your whip. You're the hire out from Tom? Yes, sir. Well, I don't know why, but for some reason or other, I thought you were he. What's your name? Harry Ross, sir. Where? Harriet. The rules here are this. You work my fields five days a week. And on Saturdays and Sundays, you're free to earn money on your own. And that money is all yours. Uh, if you have to go to Bucktown to seek work, you must come to me for a pass. Everything you do must come through me. I do not allow my overseers to beat or abuse my slaves without my permission. And I will shoot the first patroller that sets a foot on this plantation. You will find that I'm a fair man from a refined stock of southern men and women. And I loathe with a passion that white trash element amongst us. Any questions? Oh, no, sir. You can go now. Josh will show you the cabin. Since you are hired out like me, I can get you a job washing clothes for a Quaker lady in Bucktown. You think she would use me? Sure she will. And I hear she helped run away slaves, too. Now what you looking at? What? Is that a cabin up young? Yeah. Belongs to Stuart. Ain't nobody been in it for years. Keep going, Wally. I'm going to look see. By my Lord up in heaven, I can make food grow up out of that land. And where would you sell your crops? At the Bucktown Market. And enjoy. You know what you are? A slave, sir. I never forget that. A slave, yeah. But you are a gal with incentive. I is? You my bottom dollar you are. You got something the Yankees ain't got. Incentive. But... Do I guess the land, sir? Of course. This will be our little experiment, this plot of land. And I'll give you... 50% of the crop's market value. Is that fair? Yes. You move in that cabin tomorrow. And you tell Joshua to give you a, a cart and a mule and whatever tools you need. We'll get to it. You did you say? Cultivating freedom's garden in the stifling heat of August with its bloodless skies challenges the will snatching at stumps and rocks on a stretch of God's earth that 
seemingly will not yield. A pause for breathing is merely a pause for breathing. For in the end, it must bend. It will bend. I got fear, I got long pants, short pants, fat pants, skinny pants. I got shirts for your long arms, your short arms too. Woo! Wee! You ladies, the show's looking good today. I got the pants there. I got the long pants, the short pants, the fat pants, the skinny pants. I got a landing here, ladies. I got some pants and I got strength. That old John Tubman, free Negro he is. Think God sent him to this world just to satisfy women. Where he get his whales from? Sweet talk. That's what he do. Sweet talk? Yeah, child. He calls these free housemaids and gets them to give him everything the white folks throw out. And sometimes he goes right to the white folks himself and talk them into what he wants. John Tubman's a sweet talker from way back. And he can outsaw and mend clothes better than any woman anywhere. Because I don't like him myself. Say, so why don't you? Child, would you trust a man that can sit down like a woman and sew clothes? <laughs> you never know, Molly. You never know. Hi, you gal. What you want? I've been watching you off and on. You know that, don't you? Look here, mister. I ain't no housemaid, and I sure ain't looking for no good time. That Get up, mean Sue. nothing. I just thought... Get up! Nice. What's wrong? You all right, gal? All right. I just got bold with the company, that's all. Come on, Sue. Get up. Get on. All right. I'm going for now. But I'm telling you something. We're going to be friends whether you like it or not. The Bible done told me that. Come on, Sue. Come on. Get up, Sue. Is Miss Carlyle there burying today? Poor thing, she was so young. Yes. Harriet. They are forgetting again. They do not have to bring the clothes in through the back door. Did you hear about John's sister? Didn't know he had one, Molly. Well, he had one, all right. But she gone now. Had a funeral today. Was she a white gal, Molly? Yeah. 
had the same daddy but different mamas. Of course, old man Carlisle won't know enough to none of it. She and John used to meet in the color quarters all the time. She sure did care for him. And he wasn't scared to tell nobody that he was her brother. He was crazy about her. Sorry about the way I talked to you that day. Oh, oh, that's all right. Molly told me about your sister. Want some coffee? We're not at all. Sit down. They wouldn't even let me see her. Well, what about old Johnny? I ain't doing nothing worthwhile these days. You? Even if you knowed something about farmer, Jude wouldn't hire you when all he got to do is send over another slave. Well, for one thing, I could take it to the market myself. And being a free man, I could get a better price for you. I'd be better company than just any old slave man. Don't you think so? Why you want to help me? Don't rightly know. Except when you keep crowding in on my mind all the time. You know, city gals don't tell me to do your bidding. So you best leave me alone. I got no cause to want to do anything out of keeping with you. It's just that when I lost my sister, I got so blank, it brought my business down to nothing. I just thought it would be good for me to help somebody and have good company while I was helping. It's my comfort time now. Thanks for the coffee. John? Six o'clock, my stopping time. I'll see you before the sun. True what folks say about you. Seem like folks is always mouthing about me. What they say? If you spend half the night counting them coins over and over and over again. They don't poop all they want. This is freedom money. 
When you get back from market day after tomorrow, I'm gonna have enough money to buy my freedom for Master Doc. Ain't nobody mock me then. You get your freedom. Then what you gonna do? Reckon I'll go on working, but I'll be working for myself. Don't you know nothing but work? I know how to foretell the weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stuart don't know he got a conjure woman on his land. <laughs> it's something I learned from my daddy. And ain't nothing queery about it, neither. <laughs> no stranger than that fancy stitching you learned from your daddy. Shucks, I ain't learned everything from that fool. The only reason why I picked up Taylor and Tricks because I watched him, not because he showed me. Hmm. Didn't your daddy talk to you about nothing? Nah. He's too busy dreaming about glory land up north. He didn't think about nobody but himself. Didn't he love your mama? When my mama got sick, he couldn't wait for her to die so he could get on his way. I don't earn nothing off that fool. You think maybe he knowed old man Carl I was your real dad? Damn it, gal. I ain't gonna talk about things like that. I'm sorry. I ain't got no cause to shout at you about that. It's just that there's some things that's so mean about being colored. Whether you're a slave or not. I better make it back to town. You got your free man's papers on you. The trollers ride the road all night. See, I told you. You just started fretting about me already. Spells. What the fuck? Hid in the head by an overseer for having a slave run. It's all there. think about it a lot and I 
I thank God I ain't one. You like slaves? <laughs> I ain't sure about that either. But I know I don't like slaveholders. I like folks. I like you, Miss Harriet. church meeting with mom and daddy and then go see old master doc two hundred dollars gonna be my prize to it is that all you worth go somewhere with mom but he always try to sell me at that figure cause of my fate infliction you take my offer you have Won't he, John? George, yeah. Yeah, you take it. Oh, John. I'm gonna be the gladdest woman in the whole world. Today, Miss Harriet, Doc Thompson's got to give you your freedom. He ain't giving me nothing. I'm fine. He's still. Boy, they must be having some kind of party over there. Yeah, John Stewart show likes his Sunday morning parties. He had one just about every other Sunday. Wonder who that could be. They look like Mark Stewart. And his head is straight this way. John, you best believe it. Lots of luck, Miss Harry. Get Just think, the next time I see you, you'll be a free Get woman. <laughs> Can I have one kiss from you as a slave woman? Then when I see you again, I'll be kissing a free woman. I said, care what you say. We fancy today. Just going to church, Marcia. I see. Well, you have time for that. I have a special job to be done. And you're the only one I can count on to do it properly. But, Marcia. Now, gal, I've been too good to you for you to give me any butts when I need you. What kind of job is it? I got a wagon load of goods over Lake Grove, about a quarter mile from the weighing station. I have to get them to the station before noon. Well, Marcy, the weighing station closed on Sunday. Well, realizing how important this is, they are open today as a special favor to me. Guess I better go change clothes, dear. Well, no need for that. All you have to do is sit up on the wagon. Tell the mule to move, and you'll be there in no time. I'll see you there in 10 minutes.
Where are the mule, Martha? You mean to tell me that mule's not here? No, sir. Well, where is he? Mule! I'm sorry. Foolish mule must have wandered away. You're just gonna have to do it yourself. No, sir. I can't pull that wagon, Martha. Oh, sure you can, gal. I can't. Come on. You just no. step in it there. There. There's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. It's going to be real easy. That mule has nothing on you. You're going to thank me for giving you this opportunity. There you are. Now you just remember what I told you about the incentive. You don't want me to tell Mr. Doc how you've been a bad girl now, do you? What happened to you? Nothing, Mark. Doc. I see. One of Stuart's darky pageants again. And you came here to tell me about it? Yeah, Mark. What's this for? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, Mark. Two hundred dollars to buy my freedom. Oh, no, child. Here. I wouldn't let you go for $200. I'll 
I wouldn't sell you if someone offered me a thousand. A thousand? Have to be more than that, I'm afraid. A thousand? <laughs> hey! Get up! Be free for a time. If it takes two thousand, I'm gonna get it. If I got to go crazy with a rifle in my hand, I'm gonna do that too. I got to be free, John. I got to be free. says a man is a man and a woman is a woman and they supposed to live by the words of the law as husband and wife one Amen. without sin Amen. now you got the ring well put it on her boy put it on her <laughs> now take your walk Freeman husband, a slave wife, a year of communal labor, a year of parties and good times, celebrations that the slave had not known before. Yet the blight of slavery remains, and monies that must be stored in freedom's purse must be stored in freedom's purse. 
And then, as quickly as the passing of a bondman's night's sleep, the free man, John, concedes to silence, to brooding moods, to days of absence. The good times have all dwindled as if they had never been. Going somewhere, John? Going up to Cambridge. Get my business started again. Found enough white folks' clothes for free hours, gal? That's right. Just gonna walk off and leave me alone again. Harriet, you think you're the only one who got problems? I got my problems, too. My free men's papers to run out. We can pay for that out of the money we get from the cops this week. No! Get a man you think I am using my wife's money for my problems? John. I can understand you not wanting to take a woman's money. But ain't no point in you messing around up country with your ways. Why don't you try to settle down and let yourself hide out at Stuart's place or somewhere? Like a slave? months alone, but not lonesome, just angry and restless. <laughs> John is home. I'm home. Home to be oh, with shit. my baby. Didn't you hear me? I said, sweet John. <laughs> you mean a man can't touch his own <laughs> woman? No, sir. Not when you go off and leave me alone for months. Drop him when you feel like him. Come back to me. Smelling old whiskey. Your body's sticking with another woman's risotto. Hey! Come on! Come on, help!
see my free papers. I told him I left them here because I was scared to tell them. They run out. I went everywhere. I even tried to get a job cleaning up outhouses. And everywhere I went, it pushed me back like I stirred. I was so scared. A juke joint. Big drinks. Just to get drunk. Young Master Ed just died of lung fever. He did? Yeah, Miss Susan's moving up country, and Master Doc is selling everybody off. Tell Mom and Daddy I'll be over in a bit. All right, Hat. I just don't understand, y'all. One white boy croak up in the big house, a whole quarter comes down with rumor sickness. Ain't nobody gonna get sold. Doc Thomas ain't about to sell prime slaves like your folks. One thing my mama taught me, John Tubman, never depend on any man stand over your life for the work. Time for us to get out of here. Let's get where? You, me, my whole family. Escape up north. North, my butt. It's cold as sin up north. Colored folks crammed in the mills, towns, houses like rabbits. Oh, Jesus. Did you blind? Look at me. I said, look at me, John Tubman. I'm born. I could be sold away from you any day. Don't you care? Ain't you scared? Give me that damn bottle. I want you to tell me straight out right now, John Tubman. I want to hear from you right now. Yeah, I care. As soon as I get myself going, we can start saving all over again. We can start saving all over again? I'll buy your freedom myself. Look, Damn it, Gal, why are you gonna drag out that old sack again? That's what I was trying to tell you. I, I borrowed it. That's what I did. I borrowed. You yellow. All my feet are money gone. What's wrong with a man borrowing from his wife?
我得当团队，我就把谁说唔准备拍。我就不会再骗你，谁说唔准备骗你？谁说我就不骗你？啊！嗯，啊！明子，如果你当真的，我就不。Miss Mama did it. They's locked up in the barn, behind the big house. I gotta go up after them. You can't, Hat. There's patrollers all around. Benji, I done made up my mind. I'm gonna run off tonight. You gotta come go with me. With Robert Novina hired out, somebody's got to stay with Mom and Dad. Well, I gotta go get him. Benji. You can't, Hat. You can't go up there. Tell him I'm going, Benji. After I get myself settled up enough, I'll come back and get y'all, yeah? Take her inside, Benji. And you stay here for patrols, you hear me? Bye, Benji. Fleeing from bondage. Yes. The river heads north to the Delaware border, where it gets smaller, and then on to the town of Dover. Can you remember that? Yes. One must be careful where one knocks, Harriet. But they will find an underground railway station in Dover. And a ticket to Philadelphia. You mean they's gonna put me on a train that runs under the ground? No. It's not a real train. The underground railway is people along the way will help to clothe thee and feed thee and rest at night and show thee the right way to Philadelphia. Oh, Harriet. This will be thy first. Underground railway station. Yes. And if thee get to the river before dawn, thee may be fortunate enough to find a boatman there at Reedy Cove. He's often there during the night, and though we do not know who he is. We do know that he is a friend. We can trust him. Yes. Remember, we are journeying from midnight through hope to God be praised. Remember that. I sure will, Miss Rada. I sure will. Godspeed.
far as I go. You just stay by the river and you'll be safe. Yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you, sir. along the edge of the river where waters crash by over and around ancient objects of nature in their angry thrust upstream touch the moss on the tree yes 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 the river flows north does not drown in this river stream. The river is the refuge now. Those 
Men's clothes ought to cover you real good. You mean they got the wall potion? Sure enough do now. Pull that hat down over that skull. You know, that's on the poster, too. Oh, thank you, sir. Is I'm all right now? I can still tell you the woman, but the gods won't. Come on. and just behave like natural. You mean chew on my Mr. Beckett? I can't chew on Mr. Beckett. It makes a call to me. With them guards up there, you better chew, Miss Runaway. And you better not cough or he. Yeah! Yeah! Huh. Morning, boss. Morning, boss. Yeah. Come on now. Get on up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Morning, boss. <laughs> solicitous since my arrest. <laughs> Very kind of them, but sometimes they keep watch until the wee hours of the morning. Come along with me. Come along now. Come on now, don't be afeard. <laughs> they needn't be afeard. Come along, come along. <laughs> Everything my dad taught me about the woods and the river. Kept me from getting caught. He has great knowledge. Many fugitives perish from a lack of such knowledge. But what caused thee to first plan to escape from slavery? When I was a little girl, voices used to come to me. They told me that the Lord willed it. Spiritual voices? Yes, sir. I myself heard voices when I was but a lad. 
There are those that scoff and call such occurrences wicked mysticism, but I believe God uses many devices to lead us to the path of righteousness. Yes, sir. What kept thy spirit alive through the worst of it? I reasoned that as a slave, I had no rights. But then I reasoned that I did have the right to die or try to go free. I was going to have one or the other. Very well put. just about on thy way to thy new home of freedom. Cross the field to that road. The road will lead you to the turnpike. The turnpike will take you to Philadelphia. Use the map. It will lead you to the Lombard Street Church. Ask for William Still, president of the Anti-Slavery Society. Godspeed. God bless you, Mr. Last road from slavery, the first road to freedom. Philadelphia, Liberty City. Harriet Ross Tubman, in gratitude for what she should not be, what she does not want to be, what she is not going to be, praises God. She is no longer what she was. Philadelphia, full of life, laughing, and good, godly time. Like this time she gives to the stalwart abolitionist William Still, blessed William Still, whose anti-slavery society is the haven where men and women who were once slaves are helped to their new life in this baffling world of freedom. And as Harriet Ross Tubman carries out her task, she recalls all too well what the voices had once said. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces faith. And faith would not in the end disappoint. slaves? Do you want food and clothing? Well, then you must be tired. Let us show you to our sleeping quarters. He's gone to sleep. He's gone to sleep for good. He's dead. He'd be dead, all right. Said he'd be all right. Said if he could just get north for one day, he'd be all right. He'd be just fine. The death of that old man, the great look in his eye, 
And the voice of that old woman left me with a deep spirit of sadness. All I could think of and know for was to have my mom and daddy with me, to see them released from the evil of bondage. I just had to return and bring them back. seem to understand. They're not merely trying to capture you now. They're after your life. My life is with God. These is with the devil. And with God on my side, I got to go where he calls me, no matter what evil is trying to stop me. Get her mom and daddy back on Doc Thompson's plantation, and I'll catch your gal for you. My people gave to this land, fought for this land, belongs to this land, I say. This land, and it's on this land where we're gonna be free. I've waited a long time for this, Miss Moses. 